What is going on guys? Welcome back to your favorite bourbon and scotch review channel. Today we're doing Basil Hayden Toast. This one, um, a little bit too smooth for my liking, honestly, but uh, very nice. And I found it on a closeout clearance. So it is um, well worth the money if you can find it on the closeout clearance price. Just throwing that out there. Let's talk about Bed Bath & Beyond. Some of you guys love me, some of you guys hate me. I don't care. I'm just here to tell you how to make money in the stock if you want to listen. Um, so let's look at what we're looking at. Some of you guys are waiting for it to go to $50, $70, whatever. I would have had you bit there by now if you would just trade this thing. But some of you don't want to. I'm not financial advice. You do what you want to do with your position. Let's talk about it. I'm back in. So here we go. Look at the setup we have, right? Uh, possible inverse head and shoulders. Beautiful. We know which way those like to break to the upside. Trend line. Very nice. What way is it going to go? Cup and handle possibly, right? To the upside. Our odds are in our favor right now. So I'm just saying I think there's a possibility to the upside again. Um, every time I come back and touch base with you guys because... Uh, some of you wouldn't trade it before, and some of you won't trade it now, and uh, it is what it is. But let's look at some basic key elements as far as what we're dealing with, what we need to be looking for, and where we could be going. And I keep telling you, Bed Bath & Beyond is not out of the weeds. They're, they're not. They're, they're just not. I don't care who the rumor is that's investing or what's going to happen or who cares about Bye Bye Baby. Right now... We're just trying to make money in tickers. Um, the markets are bleeding. My overall thesis is bearish if you watch my spy video. I've been coming down heavily on so many tickers, and I went long. So it doesn't mean go long just because I did. But let's look at the ortex. Let's look at the charts. Let's talk about it. I don't know. I mean, let's see. All right. Shoulder, head, shoulder, trend line, trend line. So let's see which one holds. Realistically, you could come back down to about a dollar forty-four. We want to see if that holds. If that holds, that's a retest of our downward trend line that's confirming a breakout to the upside. If our shoulder holds, then I'm watching it around a dollar forty-eight, dollar fifty, right? Downside then shoot to the upside. So I'm back in with shares. I'm back in with calls. I am playing right along with you. I don't know if it's going to pan out for me, but I like the setup, and that's why I'm coming back here with the video. I followed you very faithfully through the first rise, and, um, you, you know, you guys got to make your own decisions. As of right now, this is a trade for me. I am still trading this thing until I see some sort of confirmation that Bed Bath & Beyond is on the right track. Until I see some sort of solid information that um, maybe some of these theories are going to come into play. At that point, yes, I may be behind the trend, but you know what? I'm still making money in the meantime. And you know what? I can always get back into the trade. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Every time I make a video, you get a pretty solid run and, uh, it just is what it is. So whether you trade it, whether you diamond hand it, I don't care. Look at the fib slash Fibonacci levels. We're sitting right around medium level which gives me confidence that maybe this cup and handle slash inverse head and shoulders will play out. So we're watching, you know, so like I said, somewhere in that 144 to 148 range. I do think there's going to be a little bit of a pullback. We're seeing a little bit of a pullback. Right now, $1.50 psychological, right? So um, good. If that can hold, awesome. Let's see if $1.50 holds. Um from there, I want to see the upside. I want, I want to see this just absolutely decimate some shorts. But until we have a real theory, reason, thesis, news article, right? Not theories that come out from Reddit or theories that come out from Weeble mentions or whatever. Um, 
we want news. We want the news to be moving us in the right direction. Now, like I said, last time we, I, I don't know, it, it's been a while. Um, I, I think the ladies are moving us in the right direction. I think they're trying everything that they can to be able to pull this off. So I'm not, I, I, I don't want to be too, I don't want to be the bad guy in the situation. I'm just telling you, be your money's your money. You got to do what you want to do with your money. My average, um, I'll just tell you, my average is, I jump back in at a buck forty-eight. I think whenever I seen this head and shoulders playing out, yeah, one forty-eight, and I do have some calls. They're probably not going to work. They're bouncing between green and red right now. Uh, I don't know if this is going to play out by Friday. It very well could. We're looking at it on the one hour, so we're forming the shoulder. Let's see if the shoulder holds out and if it wants to push. Don't bet the farm on it for this Friday by any means. Just uh, play it safe. Be watching your downsides, but we're watching to the upside as well. So upside, my first target's two dollars sixty six cents, which would be beautiful, right? It gets it gets plenty of calls in the money if it wants to turn and run that direction. From there, we're looking at three dollars fifty two cents, four dollars twenty two cents, four dollars ninety one cents, five dollars ninety cents, and then a full run back to about seven dollars and seventeen cents. So you've seen these areas before. Just be mindful whenever it's making its way through there, if it makes its way through there. And I'm kind of going off the theory because I'm very bearish on the overall markets as a whole. So if the markets are coming down, right, then uh, the big money has to make a decision. Are they going to continue to sell off their big blue chips that are their priority or are they going to cover their shorts? I don't know. Um, neither do you. Probably neither does anyone else. What would they do? I think they're money ahead to cover their shorts, in my opinion, rather than continue to sell off these blue chips. But, um, you, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, I, I think they might make a happy medium between the two, maybe a little covering in some of their short positions, a little of selling off in their big blue chips, and try to split the difference, uh, just because both of those are eventually going to make them money at some point. So we're just trying to play devil's advocate as far as what big money would do. We try to get in line with their thinking as far as how they feel about their positions, right? Or is it better for them to hold their short position and think they're going to continue to be able to drive a company down whenever they're bleeding money on their big blue chips, when they're selling off, whenever their capital is coming down and down? How are they going to continue to fund that short thesis that they have on some of these others? Um, so we're, we're thinking in line with big money. It's not about it's not about anything else. You have to align yourself into some sort of thesis with what would you do if you were in the situation that big money's in? Would you continue to sell off your big blue chips that you know at some point are going to make some sort of return whenever the markets come back, whenever all of this drama goes away, whenever everything else falls out of the market? that those things are going to rally because they are down 50, 60, 80% at this point? Or do you continue to apply your pressure hoping that you're right in a short thesis? To me, I think they cover the shorts before they bleed out their entire big blue chip stock position. But that doesn't mean that it has to go up right now. It doesn't mean that that thesis is correct as of this very moment. It just means I think they are getting to positions where they're trying to make educated decisions as to do I sell the blue chips? Do I cover some of my shorts? How do I make the most money right now to be able to stay relevant? So that is what it is. The live short interest is increasing. Um, live short interest percent of the free float went up just a fuzz 66.85 percent 
live short interest clocking in 76.29 million this is just ortex it's the best we have to work with so we're looking at those numbers right now the cost to borrow is very good 300.71 percent on average which is great retail doesn't always agree with selling covered calls they don't always agree with selling um you know lending your shares but it's all about making money, man. Nobody cares about your money more than you do. And if you can find a way to make money in the markets whenever everything is feeling the pain, whenever everything is hurting, and you have a decent average maybe, and you're okay with letting go of those shares, or you're like, man, everything's bleeding, and it doesn't matter what I do, and I'm okay with this, make your money. Don't worry about what all the minions say. That's what I tell you time and time again. We don't care. You just have to do what's best for you. So we're looking at what could be potentials to the upside. I want you guys to be protecting yourself to the downside with those same levels, $1.48, $1.44. If we see some sort of sag below this trend line, keep a close eye on it. You're going to want to see it sag below do a retest and break out and push, or even just a retest and a push. Um, like I said, I do think we're forming either a head and shoulders or a cup with a handle. So there is going to be possibly a little bit of sag and um, two days left in this week. So who knows what could happen Friday, right? Uh, but just keep an eye on what's going on. It looked like Bed Bath & Beyond made some interest payments as far as what they needed to do. A little bit behind, but hey, they're making those payments. So all in all, keep an eye on it, guys. It's good to see you again. I'm back in here with you. It doesn't mean that I'm here forever. I protect my accounts to the downside. I watch what's going on. Keep an eye on your lows. Keep an eye on these levels. Draw them up on your charts. It's not that hard to do. I will catch you in the next one. As always, stay golden, people. And may your accounts stay green.